Howdy, folks. I'm Jeff Gonzalez, former Navy SEAL, president of Trident Concepts, and host of the Bulletproof Workshop powered by AR15.com, where we discuss knowledge, skills, and ability to help bulletproof your everyday performance in whatever your field. Welcome to Podcast 009. My next guest leads one of the most successful online firearms resources. Taking a different approach, the folks at Pew Pew Tactical have come to be known as the new gun owner resource. They use a more down-to-earth approach to reach the target audience and with a single goal in mind to spread the fun of shooting to those who are interested, breaking down barriers with a little humor and lots of good information. He's a biomechanical engineer by trade, online tutorial entrepreneur, and a lover of all things that pew. Please welcome to the show, Eric Hung. All right. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure, Eric. Again, we were talking a little bit before the show. I did not realize that you were local. I mean, I know (laughs) I got message traffic that said you were local, but it just did not click. So this is so awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to uh, to have you on the show. First of all, I understand this is also your first time on a podcast. Yes. No so, pressure. Yeah, no, no, no pressure. pressure. <laughs> well, this will be a walk in the park because it's just basically like a blog, but you're talking. Okay. How's and that? You'll you'll probably find out why I'm writing most of the time. But <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, let's do this. Let's take a quick pause to thank our sponsors. We've been working with the folks at 1776 for comprehensive insurance of our firearms collections, and um, I'm really happy with how things are going so far. And one of my concerns is with the amount of commuting that I do with my firearms collection, Um, what happens should my vehicle be broken into or stolen with my firearms. And there's reason to have this concern because there's 800,000 vehicles stolen per year in America. So it's not, you know, it's, it's a little bit more common than what we might think. They have a comprehensive insurance plan, which is that they will cover your firearms stolen out of your vehicle or should your vehicle be stolen, cover the firearms that were in the vehicle. So that's pretty, you know, pretty reassuring in a sense. So I've mentioned this before, but the process to apply is pretty easy. Uh, approval is pretty quick. They do not require you provide a itemization or serialized numbers. There's no appraisal or schedules that you have to provide. So really all you want to do is just make sure you have proof of ownership and that's it. So if you want to learn more about the folks from 1776 and insuring your firearms collection, visit 1776insurance.com. So let's start from the beginning. Tell us a little bit about where you grew up and what your childhood was like. Yeah, so I grew up in California near Los Angeles in a small suburb, uh, probably like 20 minutes away, called San Marino. Okay. And it was it was a definitely, I think, a bubbled existence. It was, weirdly enough, probably 60%, 70% Asian, uh, mostly immigrants from uh, Taiwan, like my parents. Nice. And so, yeah, just kind of grew up there. Um Pretty, pretty sheltered, but I think led a very American life that uh, my parents wanted for me. Like they just came to, to reach the American dream. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. What, 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 what time period was that? The 80s, 90s? Yeah, so I was born in 85. Oh, shoot. Never mind. Yeah. Well, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> a little bit later than that. Okay. Continue. I'm sorry. Um, so in the bubble there in California, uh, you know, we've, we've talked a little bit about some of the places that we have had experience with. What kind of led, like, I guess what happened in your childhood that you can kind of look back and say, okay, this was a defining moment that led me to where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. What okay. do you think that might be? Definitely a couple. Oh, um, <laughs> nice. I like that. That's yeah, good. Yeah. No, I'd say, I'd say one really defining one. I never really tell people. So I guess some people know, <laughs> some people know now, right? A lot of people know now. <laughs> a um, lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I grew up with a congenital heart defect. It oh. wasn't too bad. Um, but enough to go in for surgery Ooh. and just remembered what the doctor told my parents and told me. And they always said, like, use your mind, not your back. And I sort of took that, I guess, both sides. Like, okay, oh. like, let's go more into educational based stuff, but also let's prove them wrong. I like that. So they were saying, like, yeah, you should never get into sports. You should not do anything to, like, raise your heart rate, whatever. Wow. And I said, screw it. Let's let's go. It, like, let's amp it up. Like, maybe not to 110%, but <laughs> let's, let's, let's see how far you can go. Interesting. And, so you kind of mm-hmm. took that like a challenge? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it was, like, it was, like, probably the best advice. It's like, okay, like, do well in your studies, but also see what your body can do, all, all that stuff to prove the haters wrong. Interesting. Yeah. So um, my next question was going to be why bio... <laughs> you know, like why the in- biomedical engineering, like what mm-hmm. kind of like that's a very specific. Oops. That's a very specific kind of subject. Yeah. And, and I think really it just grew like just growing up. Um, typical Asian parents are like, OK, be a doctor or oh. engineer or lawyer. 
<laughs> and I was good in math and science. I'm like, okay, let's let's do this. Yeah. But deep down, I think I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Okay. Um, and sort of just chose that topic just because I was good at it. Yeah, yeah. And then let's see what happens afterwards. But never really planned to go into the industry or anything like that. Divide like yeah. No. Designing stuff. Did you take <laughs> things apart a lot? Yes. <laughs> and always broke them. So uh, you know, I I laugh because I remember. Um, I got like a, a handheld radio with the the single earpiece that went with it. It was like the 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 all the rage back then. Mm-hmm. This was when I was like twelve or thirteen, and um, I you know I was like so happy with it. Carried it with me everywhere. Had a little wrist strap, so I'd just be bop around listening to whatever station. And one day I decided, you know, I wonder how this thing works. Mm-hmm. And so I I got my dad's tools, started opening it up. Realized, you know, once I started pulling all these parts off, I'm like. I really don't know how to put it back together. (laughs) So I think I had that radio for maybe like three or four days before I broke it, but I put it back together and made it look like it was because I didn't want my mom to be mad at me. Mm -hmm. So I got good at faking it. Okay. Fake putting things back together. I could take everything (laughs) apart. Believe me, I can destroy anything. Mm -hmm. It's putting them back together. That's my problem. Yes. (laughs) So so, um, that's interesting. The, in the engineering field. So you went to Duke Mm -hmm. and um, so that's a little bit of a stretch from California. Yes, I I chose some place that was pretty much as far as I could go. Really? Yeah, just to, like if my parents wanted to visit me, they had to hop on they a plane. They really had to be committed. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yep. Um well, like so how kind of, what kind of transition was that for you? Move mm-hmm. from like like the the Golden State mm-hmm. and and how like Kentucky, right? Um, no, North Carolina. Oh, North Carolina. Yeah. My bad. My bad. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess it's still a um a oceanfront property mm-hmm. of sorts, but it's not oceanfront like you're used to how mm-hmm. was that transition for you yeah for like the beach sort of stuff like we always went to myrtle for for spring beautiful break. beach oh yeah. yeah so that's that's really okay awesome. so i guess you kind of had a <laughs> yeah that's a not, little bit yeah yeah so like the the transition from college mm-hmm. to your next kind of like big entrepreneurial mm-hmm. step was the online tutorial yes was that something that you did because you yourself needed it or that you were offering it? I think it's sort of like PP Tactical as well. Like they all have sort of the same origin story, which was I created what I wished I had at a different time period. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I completely can see that because you're like, yeah. w- you know, we've had this conversation with other guests where, you know, if only this had been around, you know, mm-hmm. I produced this widget, whatever it is. But if only it had been around when I was younger, it would have made my life so much easier. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool. How was your foray into your first entrepreneurship, though? Um, it was right after grad school. So I, I still ended up like going further down the biomedical kind of route. So I got a master's degree at USC. Oh, wow. In, okay, so you came yeah, back me- home. Yeah, in medical devices. And um, over that time, met my future business partner into the, uh, the online educational space. So I'm actually under contractual obligation to not name it. Okay, fair. You can name it. I- you can look on my LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. But I can't name it in the context with anything firearm. So it's actually Interesting. in the same I understand contract. that. I, I get that. I can, I can appreciate yeah. that. But that's, mm-hmm. that's cool. Um, how, so that was technically like your first mm-hmm. entrepreneur challenge. Yes. What were the big like lessons learned mm-hmm. from that for sure so that one started in 08 it took about a year to really get started and so it was um basically it was netflix for online math and science i love uh, that that's a good analogy yeah 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 and i think the hardest thing in the beginning was just finding teachers to come to our studio it was nowhere near as nice as this one it was oh, like kind of dungeon i didn't They're realize like, that <laughs> yeah. oh wow so so it wasn't interactive. It was just basically you watched mm-hmm. the video on yeah. a subject of whatever it mm-hmm. was. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, it was asynchronous. Um, we kind of didn't know which topics would do the best at the beginning, so we kind of just shotgunned everything. But eventually <laughs> we found like, okay, math and science and then probably higher level math and science, yes. uh, like APs. That's when kids or rather parents would start paying for stuff. So I will say right now that if that had been around mm-hmm. in high school for me, <laughs> I would have chosen that versus summer school i'm just <laughs> yeah. going to be honest mm-hmm. yeah uh, when i got to geometry i really kind of hit a wall there and that uh that mm-hmm. was tough for me um so again and we're kind of in the same vein here mm-hmm. like i'm interested to see what ignited your passion or love for all things pew what mm-hmm. what kind of what happened there because that's <laughs> you know you're mm-hmm. kind of like in a different realm of sorts i and, and to the point you know the disclosure agreement that you mm-hmm. have there so how did that start yeah, I yeah, because growing up in LA, I never had experience with real guns or anything. Uh-huh. Like probably some rimfire things in Boy Scouts. Oh but yeah, for otherwise, sure. I think mostly it came from 
um, movies and Call of Duty and paintball. Nice, <laughs> and, nice. <laughs> well, you know that's a that's a great that's a great segue because it's like, what's next? Hmm. What do I where do I go from there? Um, did you did you have that same that that same passion early on, did, or did did it take time to build? I think the like me liking it or being interested in firearms was always there, but I just, just never took that leap of faith, I guess. Yeah, like none of my friends were into it, but as soon as I did, they all they all kind of came. And that's, interesting. That was why I started. You became it. the Pied Piper. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, we have some questions from our <laughs> okay. our forum members here. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. All right. First question, and I like this question, by the way. Reverse sear or direct cool cooking for steaks? Hmm. So I've tried both. I think so like as soon as I got to Texas, I got a green egg. Nice. I, just, I always love charcoal. Yeah. Like charbroiling everything. Yeah. Um, I try to just crank it up as high as possible. I have um, a cast iron grate on one side. Nice. Try to get it like 600, 700 degrees and then uh, drop that steak on for 90 seconds. Then 90 seconds, 45 degree. Do both sides yeah. and move it over the other side yeah. until it hits like 125, 128 for uh, medium rare. <laughs> nice. So I um I got really hooked on cooking my steaks in a cast iron skillet, mm. and so I will I have a, a burner that can get it up to about 550, maybe 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 a little bit higher than that, mm-hmm. but definitely not above 600. And oh man, <laughs> there's just something different about that mm. method for me. Uh, I've always enjoyed and i've played around with so many different methods for cooking steak because i am a in case people are wondering i am a massive carnivore i i love meat i i will eat meat any any and all opportunities so um, being able to cook it and cook it well Mm. became kind of like um i would say a hobby almost Mm. like you know like again investing into a green egg that's Mm. something that you know you're committed at that point because those are not they're not inexpensive but they also um the learning curve on them is a little bit easier than on charcoal. I think you're mm. you don't you don't run the risk of making as many mistakes. Slightly, yeah, you know, <laughs> but definitely some learning curve. There, yeah. there is a learning curve for sure because <laughs> it's it's like anything. It's uh, inter- and what's funny is I remember um, with uh, some of the some of the competitions, some of the food cooking competitions here, they um, they outlawed. I shouldn't say outlaw. That's not the right word. They prohibited the use of green eggs mm. because it gave the it gave many of the contestants an unfair advantage over mm. those that were using charcoal. So that, I I thought mm. that was kind of interesting mm. to see the professionals that were like, hmm, yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to do it old school on charcoal. Mm. That that'll really show your skill. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a good answer. I like that answer. And it's very <laughs> detailed too. So I'm a, I'm actually gonna try. Uh, I don't have a green egg, but I have something that I can almost mm. do the same thing with. All right. So now this one again. I don't have any guidance on these questions. Okay. So these are not uh, questions that I might ask, but we're going to honor these. Mm-hmm. They've posted these questions. Which Taylor is best? Taylor Swift or Taylor Momsen? Uh, Taylor Swift by a mile. I'm, Ooh. <laughs> I'm definitely a Definitive Swift answer there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Uh, is there a reason why? It was so, like, uh, I like her music. Well, uh, okay, <laughs> She's fair easy enough. On the eyes. <laughs> yes, she is easy on the eyes. That's a good one. Okay, so last question, then we'll move on. Are you doing anything with your biomedical engineering degree? So I'd say day to day, probably not. <laughs> but uh, like back to what I what I said, like we had to get our foot in the door with getting professors and teachers to take us seriously, that and I think that where that's where. It kind of helped. Absolutely. Is <laughs> yeah. so. Is that is that? Um, and I'll I'll reserve it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that business still frolicking right now? It's still running. Yeah, I actually sold it in 2018 after uh, Pew Pew took off, and yeah. like, both me and my wife went full time into that. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Yep. Any regrets selling it? No. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Well, that's good news. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about kind of like now that you have we've kind of entered the realm of Pew Pew Tactical, but mm-hmm. What was, what were some of the big challenges when you decided, like, that's a big jump between, you know, Mm -hmm. the medical field and the, you know, firearms industry of sorts. That can Mm -hmm. be kind of a big jump. So what were some of the big obstacles that you guys had to tackle Mm -hmm. in the beginning and even current? 
Yeah, so I started it as a personal blog in 2016 after all my friends started asking me the same questions. Like, hey, what's the best AR-15? Yeah, what's the yeah. best like pistol for, yeah. that I can actually get in California? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. Good questions. Those are good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. uh, so it started as a blog. That's interesting. And mm-hmm. what was the nexus for moving from the blogs? Like, and now you guys mm-hmm. have branched out and started doing all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, clearly, that's just a, a recognition of the times and kind of like uh, following suit with a lot of other successful organizations as well. Do you have a preference over blog versus written? Or I'm sorry, blog versus videos? I think, yeah, like 2016, it was still a personal blog. And then I started growing it out, getting editors, uh, getting yeah freelance writers, yeah, yeah. all that until we hit 2018. And that's when we really jumped in. So it wasn't like, okay, let's let's... Let's stop everything and try to go to Pew Pew. Yeah. We let it go until it replaced like the income from before. I like that. So we had that. that slight safety net in that regard. Okay. Fair mm-hmm. enough. Um, so one of the things that I appreciate about about the, the site and, and you in general is there's a very down to earth, low key, mm-hmm. kind of easygoing atmosphere, mm-hmm. which I believe has probably led to some of the success because it's like in the industry, there can be a, there can be some. Um, I guess the best way to put it is like mean girls. <laughs> you know, they're they're just they're not very welcoming or not very um, engaging in a in a positive mm-hmm. way. And and I am I am one hundred percent behind anything that will bring more people into the fold that will help them find answers that they're looking for, educate them if that's what they're choosing, but also be good role models for you know, the positive nature of what firearms can bring. And mm-hmm. and one of the things that you talk uh, heavily about in, uh, you know, that I've seen is your joy of shooting firearms. Mm-hmm. So when you talked about like your earlier years, plinking of sorts and how you've kind of changed and evolved and how you're now in a new position with, with what you're doing with Pew Pew, has that, like, have you really found yourself like wishing you would start this sooner? Hmm. I think so. Yeah. If, if I got into guns earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's a hard one. You know, we all mm-hmm. find our path on, in our own way, but one of the things that I like, like the resource value that you guys share um, and, you know, folks that haven't been to the website, we'll definitely leave that at the end of the podcast. But one of the things that, again, that I'm so enamored with is just mm-hmm. the, the light tone to everything. Mm-hmm. The, the, there's a, there's a, little sliver of comedy mm-hmm. to help try to b- break down some barriers and make it easier for particularly the newer shooters and uh, mm-hmm. living through the pandemic. We know that one of the fastest growing demographics that we had were first time gun owners. Mm-hmm. And you know, where do they go for research? You know, we, um, I, I partnered with Brownells to start the daily defense videos, mm-hmm. which was basically kind of in the same vein of what you're doing to try to help reach that demographic. Because my goal was, again, I want to welcome them in and mm-hmm. I want to give them you know, I want to help provide answers, but I want them to, to feel welcome. And I really like I like how you guys have done that with the site as well. Mm-hmm. And I've I, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'll mm-hmm. I'll read something and I'll chuckle. I'll be like, oh, that's a good one. I like that <laughs> one. That was a good one. You know, and, and so it's nice to see that um, has the audience taken to the to, to the to the approach that you've had. Mm-hmm. Well, have you did you do you feel like at first maybe that was not the right choice, but now it is. I'm, just because at the time the industry was very kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like intimidating, mm-hmm. you know, in, in a sense. So to try to strike out in a different direction was, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say risky, but it definitely was not not without a, you know, just there was there was risk in that, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I just wrote in the beginning what I would have wanted or how I would explain it to, to friends. Because yeah. I was literally doing that pretty much just like writing an article after I explained something to a, to a buddy. Interesting. And I think it just took off. And I'm like, okay, let's keep doing what works, right? Like why, why reinvent sense. the wheel? <laughs> I think that's great. Mm-hmm. So your friends that came to you as their like sensei, mm-hmm. what were some of the most common questions <laughs> that they were coming to you with? I think it always starts off with like, okay, just like, what's the best gun? Like, really? And I'm like, oh man, that's that's really hard. It's like, what's your purpose? What's your budget? For what sure. Do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. It's that. well, so that that's a good indicator for a lot of people because I think a lot of times they're just they're not entirely sure, and mm-hmm. so they just throw out a large net, and just through your dialogue, you kind of start mm-hmm. pinging them with like, well, what's your budget? What's the need for this? What do you intend on doing? And I think through that kind of dis, kind of like. You eventually kind of get in the right direction. So, mm-hmm. what was the best gun? Okay, so um, 
what was the best gun? What was there a trend in that? Uh, perhaps? I think yeah, people always uh, like went towards Glocks and, and also AR-15s. Like I think just like what they see, what's more portrayed out there in media, everything like that. I, I can see that. Yeah, you know, and that's funny. It's so funny how how Hollywood works for us and mm-hmm. against us. Uh, you know, it definitely portrays uh, guns in the manner that uh, you know uh, maybe sometimes I disagree with, but. Um, you know, they're, they, you, it's hard to argue with prop placement in mm. movies. I mean, you know, some of the most successful franchises have kind of like a theme in their gun mm-hmm. selections and the fan clubs that start to follow <laughs> in that direction kind of become, you know, immersed in that. They have to mm-hmm. have that and that only. I've had some students that have come through class and, and I'm like, wow, that is a beautiful, beautiful firearm. Are you sure you want to use that? <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that? Mm. So, yeah, they were. Um, so... If you, if you had to kind of like pinpoint this, and and I and mm-hmm. I preference this with, um, I'm a big believer in reviewing my reviewing performance, reviewing my mm-hmm. decisions, and trying to you know decide if that was the right choice after. And with my 2020 vision, mm-hmm. looking back, is was it the right choice? So, what would you say was maybe the biggest mistake that you guys made as you as you kind of kicked this off? Hmm. Okay. I think, yeah, like we've, we look back to see what we would change. Like we always try to have no regrets. Yeah. Um, but I'd say one thing that we would have changed was probably just, yeah, starting it earlier and then start building the team earlier. Oh, um, yeah. And then having me getting out of leadership positions, I think. Because <laughs> now we're finding like I'm the bottleneck. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So we have Jackie. She's our editor in chief now. Yeah. And she just runs a much better ship than me. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you are a biomedical engineer. <laughs> yes. So it's not like, uh, uh, I get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, that's good. That's, but that, you know, that's extremely valuable that you can actually see that and, 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 with the desire to try to continue to see the success kind of step out of that and allow those. And that's, what's also really good is that you surround yourself with great people. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, and yeah, I could see like some of the mistakes that I made. Uh, I wish I had hired staff sooner. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, there's that, there's that subtle like trepidation, like, Oh, am I ready for this? Am I really ready to kind of start bringing people on and be responsible for them and all this Mm -hmm. other business. But when I look back, I wish I had started that about three or five years earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, it would have been dramatically different and 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 in a positive way. Mm-hmm. So that's good that you can see that. And obviously you're still successful at this point. So maybe that wasn't, you know, now maybe you're just going to kind of get out of the way and allow the real mm-hmm. success arc to start taking off. So um, one of the things that I saw too uh, with, you started with the blogs. Mm-hmm. Did you start with the blogs? I, I, again, back then at that point, blogs were, the you know they were hip they mm-hmm. were in that's that's what everything was doing would you have started with videos back then probably not i think still with the blogs that's where my my skills were so that in the educo- in the educational space did a lot of seo so search engine optimization yeah that's kind of how built built pp tactical from the ground up kind of knew the tips and tricks to to getting things to rank yeah and um nice. at least compared to education the firearm space was a little little behind yeah so in that regard got in on the right time yes um, let, let all the links grow and and everything well so i mean that's a great point because you really i think you really did kind of hit the the point where it was perfect timing mm-hmm. and especially coming from a successful business already where that was kind of a uh, you know a a, a tried and true format. Mm. So as far as advice to give to up and coming, you know, because we're all in this mm. to win it, you know, so there's like, and, and I understand that there's competitive nature and everything. And I get that, but mm. I feel as though your success is a, is a template that can be provided to mm. other folks that want to try Maybe not in the same space, but in, in, in some sense, would you put a heavy as heavy emphasis on that search engine optimization now? Um, mm as you did back then and I, and what would be like the best hmm. how, how do you help people to kind of understand how to exploit search engine optimization because that's like mm-hmm. a mm, that's like dark <laughs> magic you know yeah <laughs> i think way back when um it was just like okay just have keyword density get a bunch of links from any place even their random forums or sketchy places <laughs> but now like yeah like a lot of people ask me like oh what's the secret sauce yeah yeah and yeah I, I tell them like there's kind of no more secret sauce like you still want links yeah but i think it just really comes down to writing the best stuff out content there content is always and then be people will link to it people will talk about it if it's actually really good interesting so if you're going to write something and it's not better than the first 
or second one on whatever um, rankings are, are out there, yeah. then just don't even bother. I got like you. a lot of companies I see, they're just like, okay, we should have a blog. Let's let's write it. Yeah. And then they just have someone write it, and it just goes nowhere. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I loved writing. I I wrote um, for my personal website. I used to write a. I I started off doing a daily blog. Uh, and then that kind of got up there. And then as soon as I kind of realized, okay, that's not sustainable, I started going to like a weekly and now I'm at a monthly. And one of the things that I enjoy about that is it gives me the opportunity to like in our classes, I'll see something in our classes and, you know, I can sit there and explain to the class members, okay, here's, here's, here's whatever it was and give them some, in, give them some more insight and help them to kind of understand it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But then I realized, well, that question or that issue would probably be valuable for the masses to also know. Mm. And so like I started to really uh, dive into writing blogs based on what I was seeing in classes and not, nothing like derogatory, like, Oh my God, this guy was a soup sandwich more like, Hey, you know, here's some things to think about. And what's interesting is when I kind of shifted to that, like I used to write like whatever, I can't remember the early days were terrible. And, and when I started to recognize that what I need to do now is I need to address things that are relevant mm. and that are recent. And that helps to kind of like people are interested in that point. Like they, they become a little bit more, huh, I have had that happen to me on the range mm. and this is valuable. Mm. Um, so that was kind of like my big takeaway. And I like doing videos, but videos are kind of like a different animal. Like mm. I feel safer writing a blog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think that's the same for me. That's why I'm yeah. never really in front of the camera there. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a, we have our, our own team, Sean. Yeah. Sean out there. He's just watching me. <laughs> yes. Yes. He's a, he's, he's watching over there. I can yeah. see him behind the lens. He's like, now he's, you know how I feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, there, there's like a, like, I don't know how to put it, but there's just a little bit more, uh, a, I guess a, maybe a bigger safety net with a blog than there is mm. with videos. And I understand that videos are the new thing. And, and, Here's what I try to tell people. Like the way I look at videos is a great way to study. Mm. It's not necessarily going to be, it's not going to help you pass the test. It's just a way to study for the test. Mm. And you're going to have to still get out there and do, you know, the work. But I like to think of the video. So now I, I try to do more videos. Obviously we're doing more videos. Mm. Uh, but the, the key thing that I've tried to take away is, okay, I want this video to be successful and I want them to recognize that no matter how detailed my video is, it's still not a substitute for you getting out there and doing it. Mm. And that's the hard that's the hard sell that I have. Like a lot of people write want it now, overnight success, little mm. little input, little effort, blah 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 blah. So that's frustrating. Heard from our sponsors at seventeen seventy six insurance. So when we talk about comprehensive insurance plans as it relates to your firearms collection, what are we talking about? Well, first, it's not just including your firearms but it extends to you, your accessories and your knives. And then when we talk about the individual items that are, are part of the coverage plan, we're talking about accidental breakage. We're talking about loss in the mail. So if you're going to ship your firearms to a training class or perhaps to get them worked on at a gunsmith, you're gonna be covered. We're talking about events that happen both at home in a way. So if you travel like I do, it's nice to know that I've got coverage no matter what I'm doing or where I'm going. We're talking about burglary, and that's both within your home and your vehicle. So if you leave the range, go have uh, some breakfast tacos with friends after the range day, and your vehicle gets broken into, you're going to be covered. There's natural disasters and fire. There's also inflation coverage. I, I like the last one, which is loss from all other causes. And there are other parts to the insurance that are very valuable to me, which is there's no requirement for serialization, serialized numbers, uh, itemized lists. Uh, there's not gonna be any appraisals or schedules required. All you really have to do is have proof of ownership and you're good to go. So if you wanna learn more about 1776, visit 1776insurance.com. One of the things too that I like feel becomes important is where do you see Pew Pew Tactical going? Because you guys mm-hmm. have gotten, you've come a long way in a short time. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and I want to make sure that you guys stay around for a while. So what's, mm-hmm. what's the future vision look like for you yeah, guys? Yeah, for, for us, I think it's a little bit of like doing what works. So uh, continuing with the blog, 
Um, Jackie has gotten it up to two articles a day. So 14 wow. articles out. Uh, granted, <laughs> some of them are, are updates, but for sure. Yeah, but we're in a space where, yeah, updates work, like grant, like new things come in. We're, we're testing tons of things all the time. Yeah. And like we have, I don't know, almost 2,000 posts. A lot of them are best ofs that I think people know us for. And yes. you can only have so many of those. Like I think we've hit 99% of saturation. All the best. Yeah. Like you can't, <laughs> I don't know what else we could do for, for there. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm asking, you know, because like yeah. I, some of the things that I've seen, it's like, uh, I don't want to say you guys have done it all, mm-hmm. but you've done a lot. Yeah, and while it's a proven, it's a, it's a formula for success. What's next on the horizon for you mm-hmm. guys? So continue to do the blogs. And- yeah, so definitely more videos as well. Yeah, Sean's uh, helping a lot with that, um, and then Johnny, who also joined us from LA, so he was our videographer. So we brought more and more people over. Nice. Um, and then we're just trying out new projects. Like we have a new new thing called Pew Pew Meter. Uh, so depending whenever this this airs, sure, uh, it should be should be live. But essentially, it's uh, Rotten Tomatoes for guns. I like it. Tell mm-hmm. me a little bit more about that. What is? Yeah. So like we, we'll have our editors um, and our reviewers kind of give our take on a gun and uh-huh. then score it like one to five uh-huh. and then we'll open it up to regular people who sign in and put I in their love notes that too. we definitely have to get together on this because we yeah. we have a segment um that we call facts not feelings mm. which is very similar to that we have a baseline test that we put all the guns through it's about a 50 round course of fire mm. and it allows us we have you know we basically shot the baselines with our favorite guns the guns mm. that we feel like we can shoot <laughs> the best with and we use that as our ba- oops, we use that for our baselines to compare all these new guns, and it's been really fun because, mm. like, there were some guns that I I wanted not to like, but they shot so well, mm. and I, and I have that kind of like, hmm, okay, well, it's not it's not I'm not biased I'm not I'm not it's facts not feelings this gun did shoot mm. well it's not like it's uh, or maybe I don't like the look of it maybe I don't like the the company or maybe I don't like some of their marketing, whatever, but it's hard to argue with that. Mm. It's hard to argue. And so like, I love that you're doing that. And I think that's going to be hugely Mm -hmm. successful because you're going to be able to get people to submit their, Mm -hmm. their, their basic thoughts on that as well. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have like a a directory, a repository of Mm -hmm. sorts for a specific firearm. So like, you know, people will be able to just list, 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 list. So now Mm -hmm. it's a resource that folks can go in there and read through and just get so much more Mm -hmm. like, again, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to know if you're going to like the gun just by holding it in your hand. Mm-hmm. You really do have to take it to the range. And, and of course, that's where that's the difficult decision is, <laughs> do I pull the trigger, no pun intended, yeah. on this purchase or do I wait? And so providing more insight into that, I mm-hmm. think, is going to be huge. All right. So when is that going to go live? We're in beta testing right now with the team. Oh, so wow. hopefully in uh, probably two weeks for actual live. I think we're probably uh, by the time this airs, it okay. should be maybe a week or okay. two after. So that's probably we're about three to four weeks uh, hmm. from airing. So that's actually perfect. So okay. we'll definitely be able to talk a little bit more. Uh, well, not talk, but it'll be <laughs> it'll be live at that point. Hmm. So by the time awesome. people are watching this, they'll be able to go and check it out hmm. and hopefully start to produce. Because I, I imagine that's going to be also a lot of fun to watch. Like hmm. who really is, you know, like how is the public going to take this? You hmm. know, like we have our own theories and we have our own kind of like ideas. But when you have the masses putting in their input, mm-hmm. that's going to be that's going to be huge. First of all, <laughs> yeah. and it's going to be awesome. I, I I'm really excited to see now. How is that? How's that data going to be like um, accessible? Will people be able to like sort through it and filter it? And yeah, part of the reason it's taken so long, I feel like it's a six month project right now, <laughs> is yeah, working with the developers and getting that whole database and feeds in. Oh my um, god! Correctly. Yeah, I love hearing this. This is music to my ears because I love data. I'm mm. a I'm a data like mm. you can like I love to collect metrics on anything and everything. Mm. Uh, you know that's one of the reasons why I feel like we're successful is that we do collect metrics on just about anything. Mm. You come to a class, and uh, you know every round you fired is basically a graded round in mm. some way, shape, or form. And so we can provide that to the students so they can actually monitor their own their own learning and their own performance. Mm. So they become advocates for their own skill development rather than me kind of him hawing on you. You can, you, Oh, here's where I'm at. Why am I not making it to this next level? Oh, this Mm. is why, because you know, according to my performance as I'm, you know, there, this is all dialogue that's going on inside. I don't necessarily need to tell you that you're not shooting close to what your peers are doing because you can see that for yourself. Mm. Some people obviously uh, don't take that as a learning opportunity, but others, uh, that's where I would say some of our best students have taken their, taken responsibility for their own learning Mm. and actually taken it on board. So something like this is going to provide so much information um, and, and it'll be available to the public, not Mm -hmm. just to, 
not just to view, but also to participate. Yeah. And I think that's what's really cool is that now the audience members, the, f- the followers, the fans mm-hmm. can actually contribute to something. So that's brilliant. I think yeah. that's an outstanding <laughs> idea. I, I can't wait already. I, I, I really am curious to see like what people are going to be saying about like what my opinion is versus what some other mm-hmm. people's opinions are. And <laughs> I'm sure that's going to create a lot of um, animosity of some sort, I'm sure. But it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fun to watch. I and agree. <laughs> I agree. I'll give credit. Uh, my, my wife came up with it. So we work together on the blog. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So that's always fun. Yes, that is fun. <laughs> well, good for her. Thank mm-hmm. you for producing or providing us with this amazing <laughs> new option. All right, so we have the Rotten Tomatoes for Guns. Mm -hmm. What is it called again? Pew Pew Meter. Pew Pew Meter. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, What else? Anything else on the horizon for you guys? Um, I think it's probably just looking more at what we can offer through like like swag and apparel. Uh So we we partnered up with uh, TriStar Trading. And huh. so, like, yeah, they make our T-shirts. So in the way beginning, my wife and I printed our own T-shirts. We had it in you're like, kidding, like, like in in the living room, and we were like boxing them up. Wow. We're like, okay, we can't do this. There's like enough orders where it's really annoying, but not so much that you need like like a warehouse for sure. So yeah, now you need a warehouse, <laughs> or now you need <laughs> yes, a third yeah. party. Yeah, that's so now, awesome. So they help. Um, they have their own really cool shirts. They work with other uh, influencers as well, and then they have our our slings and belts, and and we're growing out that line too. Interesting. So I did not know that you had product like that. Yeah. Yeah. What was the nexus for going down that road? I think it's it's just like we didn't want to do it ourselves anymore. It was getting oh. big enough that let's let's work with people that know what they're doing. Well, I meant like the uh, the slings are slings mm-hmm. that you designed, and yeah, we work with uh, Hardline. Or, nice, yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's I'm curious to see what these slings yeah. look like. And you said belts as well. Belts, uh, we just have core essentials. Like the, it's like the ones you. we like. Yeah, I, like, like, I think okay. we're going down that route. Interesting. Okay, so yeah. that is. Uh, like what is so when I say this next question or when I ask this next question, where do you see Pew Pew Tactical in say five years? Mm-hmm. Where where what's your vision for that? What's it gonna look like in five years? I think for us it's just bigger metrics all around. Um so like yeah, so or sort of the same things, but just a lot bigger. Like we wanna be this media empire ish thing. I like where <laughs> your head's at. Space. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> um so I'm curious. Do you see a potential uh, skill transfer from your online tutorial program to mm-hmm. online tutorial for firearms? Mm-hmm. So we did like a, a little test with that as well. Interesting. So there's like a handgun course uh, on the site. It's a little bit hidden, um, but you can you can find it in the drop downs. Okay. And it's just beginning handgun. Interesting. And it's just taught by me. Okay. Um, I went through the whole like NRA instructor kind of thing, and yeah. I've taught enough friends where um, I think I know what I can do at least through through video. Uh huh. But um, yeah, it's done like reasonably well. Okay. But I think we just haven't taken that next leap uh, because we wanted to find more instructors. Like I can do beginning handgun, sure. But yeah. if it's anything more than that, I'm not. Not the guy. Interesting. So. I like that mm-hmm. though. I think because that leverages massive amounts of um, experience already, mm-hmm. and positive learning experiences are always good to tag along with. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I imagine now the tech, the technology has probably gotten a little bit easier and better mm-hmm. to be able to do that. So, I, and I've always been curious why our industry didn't take you know distant learning mm-hmm. or online learning more seriously. Like I, I as an instructor. There's only so much I can do, um, and and I I it's not that I avoid doing beginner level classes. It's just the demand for intermediate or advanced level classes is just mm. more. I mean I hate to say it that way, because really what people need are more beginner to intermediate classes, uh, but that's not how they see it. They see uh, that they may should be, I, for whatever reason, whether it's the internet or their own personal ego, they they want to kind of jump up to the higher stuff. Mm. Hmm. And I'd always like, I like it, coming from coming from the Navy. We had different type of learning tools when we were, um, you know, deployed, and they 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 they, they kind of leverage some of the technology that we're seeing now, hmm. and and so I I attended various types of courses that you know were taught in distant learning hmm. in a sense. And so I know that there's a, I know that it can be done. Obviously. Um, somebody like the Navy can put their full weight behind it to make that happen. So Mm -hmm. in an entrepreneurial space, it's a little bit different because that's obviously going to be a little bit more costly. But I, I'm, I am curious, like this sounds to me like, all right, you guys are starting to kind of like scratch the surface of Mm -hmm. that and potentially come into a really interesting environment where, 
Um, I, I, it's not that I see live fire training going away in a structured school environment. I don't see that ever going away. But I, there is a gap mm-hmm. that is not being filled right now. And with all of these new gun owners that are out there, you know, it's like, what can we provide them that will help them stay engaged and develop that passion that you have, mm-hmm. the, the aspect of, like, I always try to emphasize to people that, you know, everybody comes to guns in their own, by their own accord, whatever that is. Um, but what's, what's important is that we continue to support one another and help one another. And, you know, like sometimes the industry isn't always that way, as you know, but um, this sounds like it would be really in a mm-hmm. good way to help kind of create that uh, welcome, uh, a one step further in the door, if you will, of a welcome mat. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, you know, I hope that continues to, to expand and mm-hmm. uh, I look forward to seeing what <laughs> sort of, you know, creative juices you guys get mm-hmm. flowing for that. Because I think if you, you know, I think there's a couple of organizations that could probably pull it off. And with the success that you guys have, I see that being kind of, you know, maybe not anytime soon, but definitely like that's why I was curious what you see for Pew Pew Tactical in like mm-hmm. the five year yeah. realm, because that that could be a game changer in mm-hmm. many ways. I mean, um, you know, and it's it's frustrating because I have so many other folks that are distant family relatives and whatnot that can't can't make it to training classes and i'm trying to talk to them over the phone and i'm sending them links and references and things like that so i know there's an interest there i just don't know how to make it all work to see the the positiveness uh, or uh, not the positive but the growth the Mm -hmm. growth because i feel like that's the next step for our industry Mm -hmm. you know what what we have seen in our industry is sometimes we are lagging Mm -hmm. behind a lot of others not similar industries but other industries they uh they typically I suppose the best way to put it is that they respond to current trends a little bit better mm. than we do. Uh, and of course, there's exceptions like you guys that are really doing a better job. Mm. Um, so one of the questions that I have for you is like, what advice would you give to people that are out there and looking to try to make their mark? What's a good like like w- if you had a uh, mm. if you had a mentor that was going to give you advice, what would that advice be? Hmm. OK, I think I'm going to butcher the quote or or. Go Gen- for it. The general's idea idea is um, essentially you only need two or three skills that you're good at to be like very successful in life. Like you don't have to be good at everything. Like I think for me it was writing, um, and also just knowing how to explain things and a passion of, for guns. And just that that's like it essentially. Everything else you can learn enough to be dangerous, but you only <laughs> need to be yeah good in like two three things. I like that. Yeah. That's actually mm-hmm. really nice because that kind of like lowers. I guess it lowers the bar for not in a bad way, mm-hmm. but it makes it more achievable. You know, you don't have to perfect everything. You just have to be good at one or two of these things. Mm-hmm. That's that's great advice. Did you uh, did you follow that advice? Um, I mean, I think it's like looking back, you're like, okay, that, that totally makes sense. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. So let's get to some of the fun stuff. Okay. Um, let's talk about what is your favorite <laughs> handgun and why? Hmm. I think, yeah. Like as soon as I got to Texas, I just bought a bunch of stuff that I couldn't <laughs> before. So, so yeah, California has the handgun. Welcome roster. to freedom, my friend. <laughs> yeah. All the NFA items, all the trusts. Yeah. So I went nuts. On, you went crazy. On I'm sure. Yeah. I can see that. That's <laughs> awesome. And people, uh, I, I, I'm not, uh, mm-hmm. it's so funny. I have a lot of friends who have done the same thing. They've, they've, uh, they've moved their business from the states uh, that were restrictive to mm-hmm. freedom loving states. <laughs> and like, it's like all of a sudden, like, literally a log jam just as unjammed and like uh, i went i remember i went to a friend's <laughs> house and uh he literally had laying all over the living room i mean so many nfa items that he mm. finally was able to <laughs> to to get his hands mm-hmm. on and he was just so excited so happy so i love hearing that yeah all right so now that you have access to freedom mm-hmm. what's that favorite pistol and all right. why yeah favorite pistol right now is the staccato p Ooh, yeah and they're they're homegrown like, yeah homegrown yeah, <laughs> right outside austin yes and uh yeah got it got it suppressed uh we, there's a pew pew tactical logo on it so it's it's oh yeah, nice. shoots awesome <laughs> okay so so you selected that pistol mm-hmm. that's a high-end pistol mm-hmm. um but so d- why what was your rationale behind purchasing mm-hmm. or that being your favorite pistol i think i just always liked um the company. So before oh, yeah. I got a private party transfer of, S- of a STI gun. Nice. So it was a nine Back in mil, the day. Yeah, nine mil single stack, I think Trojan. Ooh. Before, and I used that to compete in USPSA single stack. Nice. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, one day I'm going to get a double stack. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they were, I love Dave. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I thought, um, 
you know, moving in this direction with a double stack nine mil was hugely successful. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I love the 1911 platform. Mm-hmm. I love what it, uh, like what it represents, where it came from. It's also hard to argue with the engineering success that it has. And now that you have it chambered in a more popular, you know, cartridge and a magazine capacity that is a little bit more, you know, fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's fun to do reloads, but it's also nice when you don't have to do as many reloads. <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. Okay. So, um, so is that, is that something, uh, so that's a, that's your favorite gun, mm-hmm. handgun that is. Now, when we move into the AR-15s, mm-hmm. where are you at there? Yeah, so back in California, the first AR I got was a Daniel Defense. <gasps> really? Yeah, so I think- Wow, just, they made them California legal? Yes, yeah, this was way back when- Oh, um, <laughs> I think okay. They had, yeah, bullet buttons and everything. Oh my God, oh, I had to do a class <laughs> with people with bullet buttons. Yeah, yeah. God, I bless them. Now you have to open up like the receiver halves. I'm like, oh man, I'm oh glad, glad I'm out. It was, it was fun converting everything over to-, to regular status interesting so so i that's a good that's a good point so mm-hmm. a, a neutered firearm mm-hmm. can be retrofitted to be a freedom loving mm-hmm. firearm okay i i was always curious about that i don't know enough about some of the neutered guns um mm-hmm. there's some ones where like they, they drill in they put kind of things exactly that, like activate when you open up the receivers yeah. those are probably harder yeah to move back but okay. but yeah <laughs> so is it just because that's nostalgia for you because mm-hmm. it's your first one yeah i think so i like that <laughs> i love daniel defense i've had uh we've had some uh we had some fun just uh last week we were up in wisconsin doing mm-hmm. a long range class and both paul and i ran daniel defense rifles mm-hmm. in that nice. class yeah uh he uh he was very happy with his rifle selection and as as was i so that's mm-hmm. fun a lot of love for daniel defense there um, do you play around with all oh, with shotguns? Not too much with shotguns. Yeah. Um, but we've recently tested, uh, yeah, the the new Beretta. Ooh, like that that was really good. Uh, oh, ended man. up ended up buying it, so I guess that's that's my <laughs> stamp of approval. Fair enough. Hard earned <laughs> cash going towards something definitely means and and yeah. and the nice thing about like the position that you're in is that you get to play with a lot of different things, mm-hmm. and then you can, if you choose, make the decision to actually purchase it on your mm-hmm. own. So that's yeah. actually, and you're right, that is a stamp of approval. I think mm-hmm. that a lot of people don't recognize. Yeah. Um, so is that the only one? Is that the only shotgun that you have? Um, I do have a Benelli M2 that I use for Ooh. three gun. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. So that was really good. That's hard um, to argue. And then yeah, the first shotgun I think was a Mossberg 590. Ooh, um, pump. Yeah. wow, yeah. that's old school. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah, old. It has school. a heat shield. It's like so no heavy. way. It has the heat shield. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> like why would you put a heat shield on a shotgun? You know. It's like that. I mean, it did have like a cool look to it when mm-hmm. it first came out. But I always questioned like, is this really necessary? Does this <laughs> thing heat up that much that yeah. I have to be worried about touching? the barrel mm-hmm. so i'm i'm always like oh, i don't know uh i've had heat shields on m4s before but i don't see a heat shield being valuable on a shotgun <laughs> yeah all right so you've mentioned a couple times that your uh, interest in competitive shooting do you still mm-hmm. shoot competitively now you're here in so Texas? no <gasps> it, it seems like what? since i've come here i've shot less like what no, no competitions <laughs> like so i have a four-year-old and oh. a six-week-old oh yeah so the only ones i ended up competing were night matches oh. so those were super fun like you, like you nighttime find, yeah like you find out like your flashlight's always gonna break something's always gonna break in the in the nighttime interesting and like one day I'm like, okay, I'm going to be on the, the operator class one where it's, where it's not. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, you got... so, so not yet. Um, mm. Recently got my first set, but I'm waiting what for- What kind did you get? Uh, 31 alphas. <gasps> Oh, Paul would really like to hear that. Yeah, we just, uh, yeah, yeah, we, um, we just got done with a night hog hunt uh, mm. about two or three weeks ago. Uh, and that's a whole, that's another, mm. another fun thing about living in Texas is that, um, I shouldn't say fun because they they are not fun, but the hog infestation that we have. Mm-hmm. So, but the nice thing is that um, it makes for a good opportunity to explore the the aspect mm-hmm. of hunting. Yeah. It was Paul's first hunt, and it was hmm. a successful hunt for him. So it was nice because you know they're considered vermin, so we don't have to worry about tags or mm-hmm. seasons or anything like that. So that made it kind of nice. Um, so I suppose once the uh, the little ones get a little bit. <laughs> Bigger, you'll be able to get back to. Do you miss shooting competitively? Did you shoot it a lot when you're back in Cali? Yeah, like a, g- a good amount, like probably really? once or twice a month at least. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's withdraws. Yeah. So started with three gun, and then I just I think I just didn't like shotgun. I just didn't like practicing. Loading. Yeah. Yeah. So went into yeah um, single stack and also two gun when they nice. had that, and then nice. nighttime nighttime, and then moved into like PCC nighttime. Oh, nice. So that, was, that was really fun. Interesting. I didn't know they had both mm-hmm. those. Um, I'm not sure. I know that there's a 
pretty strong competitive scene here mm -hmm. in Central Texas. So hopefully once mm -hmm. you find the time to get back to it, it'll be, mm -hmm. you know, like riding a bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you start off shooting competitively early or did you find that late? I think I probably started too early. Oh, and, really? Yeah, I was like, oh, let's do three gun. And oh, then, jump right in head yeah, first. Yeah, we're like, oh, shoot, we have to spend so much money to just get started. So in the beginning, we were doing pump. Like, I used the 590. <laughs> I think <laughs> it was, yeah. It's that not, was, you're not going to be competitive. Fun. That was yeah. not fun. Yeah, you just, yeah, it'll be really <laughs> tough. I'm, that's interesting. That's a good point. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it depends on what you want to get out of shooting competitions. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I value any. Any activity that supports the uh, the lawful, you know, mm -hmm. arms, if you will, and the sport of shooting is a fantastic activity that I hope more people get involved in. And it's it's got so much value. Um, I one of the things that I've always kind of like my, um, I guess you could say my my lesson learned was my competitive career was much earlier in my. Um, it was like still when I was in the military and then when I left the military, uh, outside of the military and then the business just got so, I got so busy that mm -hmm. I didn't have time to shoot anymore. And that's that, like, I say that I got busy cause something had to give family life, work life, mm -hmm. you know, what something had to give. But I do wish that I had at least maybe kind of still went out there like maybe once every three or four months and, mm -hmm. and just kind of kept, you know, kept a little connection to it because I almost went cold turkey. Mm. And just recently we've been doing some of the competitions uh, you know, uh, over at the SIG Academy. Hmm. And it, it reminds me of what I what I appreciate about the, the sport of shooting and what I what I also miss about it. You know, mm -hmm. so that's the one thing that I wish I had done a little differently is I wish I, uh, you know, I just it was like. I got something's got to give, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> and it was also, like you said, a little costly to, to shoot competitive. I shouldn't say that entry level. You know, if you, if, it, if it's just a fun activity that you want to do, uh, you can do it with just about anything yeah. out of the box. Uh, but when you start to reach that level where it becomes real competitive for you, that's where mm -hmm. the dollar signs start to add up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it really does add up quick too. <laughs> yep. And I love buying my gear and messing with it, breaking it. And yes. I, yeah, that's how it ended up like reviewing a bunch of stuff. It's just like things I bought and tried and these things worked for me, these didn't. So So what, yeah. what, what, when you saw your top <laughs> like your top whatever top five, top ten lists, mm -hmm. did did that did that manifest itself um organically or did you kind of like like oh gosh i've gone through these five different mag pouches or holsters mm -hmm. let's let's try to sync this up to where i can put this out there to people to kind of help them understand that was mm -hmm. how did that kind of like develop because yeah, that it, is one of your uh -huh. most well known for yeah. kind of things <laughs> exactly i think yeah it probably depends on which which best ofs but like yeah. a lot of it just came about like what i bought and tried and and like i tried my friends and those work, those didn't. Yeah. And yeah, I just I just spent a bunch of stuff and there's like a box of pure pistol lights and oh like my God. three boxes of holsters. There, there's a lot of holsters everywhere. I try to tell people, <laughs> I was like, listen, you're gonna probably have to buy two or three things, like maybe a holster, maybe a mag pouch, maybe a belt, two or three versions of that before you finally find the one that you like. Now, mm -hmm. the nice thing about having the best of list is that it helps to streamline that down to maybe only one or two. Mm -hmm. You know, so I also try to tell people like, hey, uh, you know, before you get too far down the rabbit hole, understand what it is that you're looking for. You know, mm -hmm. what is it that you're trying to do with this belt, this holster, this gun, whatever it is, because that will also s help you simplify the process. Um, one of the things that I've always like everybody always is asking me, hey, what's your what, what's your favorite gun? And I'm like, well. I guess the gun that I have in my hand when I need it, that's mm. my favorite gun. Uh, and I try, and I, I, I'm coy with it a lot of times because I, I don't want somebody to choose a gun just because that's the gun that I have. I want them to choose a gun because they've identified some attributes that they're looking for, features that they're looking for, capabilities that they're looking for. They've defined what the mission is, and they kind of help filter through all of that until they find what works best for them. Mm. Uh, what works for me may not work for you, may not work for everybody else, but. I have a process and that's what I'm trying to emphasize to this to the masses is that have some sort of process in place that allows you to kind of take advantage of resources like Pew Pew Tactical where you can go in there and start to all right well here's these these five but these three have what I'm looking for and these mm -hmm. two really have the color that I want and this one is the <laughs> is the price point that I can afford you mm -hmm. know so it makes it a lot easier for people because I, I and I, I always try to tell people like listen if you buy it just because you bought it doesn't mean you have to use it. <laughs> you know, there's that buyer's remorse that mm -hmm. so many people go through. And I try to emphasize, you know, if it doesn't work, don't keep pushing the bad 
something bad. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, it may not work for you, but it might work for somebody else. So find a nice home for it. You Mm -hmm. know, you can, uh, like you said, I have, I've been going through, I have like a, um, a task reminder every month (laughs) to go through gear and try to filter through stuff that Mm -hmm. I really just need to find new homes for, or, you know, throw it in the trash. Mm -hmm. And I hate doing that. I really do. I'm like, oh my God, at the time I bought this, this was so awesome. And now I'm just going to toss it in the trash. But Mm -hmm. You know, I just, oh, I've gotten to the point in my life where I, I like the the minimalist aspect mm. and I'm just trying to streamline down. So that leads me to this next question. If you had to just own one <laughs> firearm, okay, what would it be? I think it's going to have to be the one I've shot the most and that'd be a Glock 17 Gen 3 back I in like California. That. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's self stippled and it's like a really bad stippling job <laughs> and we have a picture of it on the site and like oh, really? all the comments are just like oh man that's like the worst stippling <laughs> job ever like look at all the skin stuck in there and everything but i don't know it still feels the best maybe because it's like just what i was used to the, the most like oh, 10,000 plus rounds oh my gosh well that's awesome because yeah. you know and then you know you that's a it's hard to argue with the reliability mm-hmm. Uh, it does exactly what it's designed to do, and it does it very well. Mm-hmm. So it's not a, it's not necessarily like a bad choice. And if I guess the zombies were to come over the hillside, <laughs> that's a pretty decent one to be mm-hmm. to be relying on. So um, let's start wrapping things up. So I got one last question, if you will, one mm-hmm. final question. What is the biggest takeaway you want the listeners? Hmm. What's the biggest takeaway for our listeners here from our discussion, um. or even something else? No, I think it's, I guess I'll go through the, the entrepreneurial route, which is, um, yeah, just get really good in something and yeah. then you can make money from it. <laughs> yeah. That's a secret to success right there. Yeah. I That's don't know. a good one. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that, you know, you, you kind of like are a trailblazer, you know, in a mm-hmm. sense, you kind of broke trail early mm-hmm. on in this, in this particular field. And so information like that I, I is extremely valuable, I think, you know, because a lot of times there's this reluctance to try to try something, mm-hmm. go out there and do something. And and a lot of times it's maybe because there's a self-imposed obstacles and other times it's just because there's that um, just like a, a risk aversion. Mm-hmm. And you kind of took risks on all of this. Yeah, I think I took it early enough <laughs> where it probably wouldn't have mattered if I'd crashed and burned. Uh, Fair enough. I, I lucked out. Like, there's definitely a lot of luck, a lot of, yeah, uh, well, fortune. Up privileges. Yeah. Fortune is a, is a beautiful thing. You <laughs> just, you know, you, you just, you know, I welcome fortune. Mm-hmm. That's it. Uh, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start wrapping things up with where can folks learn more about you and Pew Pew Tactical? <laughs> Um, I think, yeah, just like check out pewpewtactical.com. Um, Pretty if you easy. search best something, something in the gun industry, we probably come up at least top three or so. Awesome. Um, and then Pew Pew Meter, hopefully it's out by the time it, it, this is out. So I'm, you'll see I'm it on the site. It. Yeah, I believe And it uh, yeah, check out our, our YouTube, our, yeah, Facebook, every tw- Instagram, everything. So <laughs> to send people to uh, all of your social media would be based on, is it is it pretty much Pew Pew Tactical yep. for everything? Yeah, exactly. That's the other nice yeah, thing about easy. the name. The name was solid. <laughs> The name was solid yeah. because you guaranteed almost that you could capture yes. all. Yes, well, there's of a lot the... of other like slight variations. So yeah. <laughs> well, fair enough. They'll yeah. they'll find it all. It's it's the modern world. Hopefully they yeah. can Google and mm-hmm. whatnot. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> Eric, thank you so much for coming on our show and sharing your passion for firearms, your uh, your contribution to the community as far as trying to help improve us and move us forward. I'm really excited to see what five years looks like from now. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of going to keep kind of prodding you about <laughs> yeah, that online. And we're local. So yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, trust me. I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be definitely kind of like every time I'm like planting a seed. Eric, come on, let's get going on that. <laughs> yeah. um, but I want to thank you. And I want to thank uh, Sean for coming out as well. Thank you, Sean, in the background. The quiet Sean over there. Uh, thanks for tuning in, folks. Thanks for the support from our sponsors. I want to thank the men and women that are holding the line for us. Uh, Check out all the previous podcasts by visiting bulletproofworkshop.com. Learn more about me and training opportunities by visiting trainingconcepts.com. Until then, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. You're listening to the Bulletproof Workshop podcast. Take care and stay safe.